Paul Reddy's youngest child, Liz. I was born quite late into his life, and of his four children, perhaps had the least opportunity to get to know him. In my youth, he was well on his way to fulfilling the immigrant dream, and unlike my brothers and sister, he didn't need me to work alongside him for long hours in the grocery to help improve the family financial circumstance. I perhaps had less opportunity to talk with my father, but perhaps more opportunity to observe him at rest and at play. I remember being so impressed that in his early 50s he could still raise himself in a one-armed horizontal plank on the edge of the kitchen table. And I remember being so proud to take him to my school ping pong tournament and how he would jump and get that little grin on his face when he put this wicked top spin on a ball. And I still see his tan, furry back, shining with sweat, bent over for hours, pulling weeds, and the long stream of white water that whooshed out of the hose all day as he hand lotioned the lawn. When I recall these things, it's with a great deal of affection, but perhaps less knowledge of him as an individual. And in creating this film, I have more fully come to understand and truly appreciate my father through the events that molded his character and shaped his life. We are all products of our environment, culture and time. My father's history is deeply connected with the turbulence of the 20th century. The main historical events in Europe, particularly Hungary and Romania, had a determining effect upon his life. Recently I read a quote by Malcolm Gladwell, author and writer for The New Yorker. If you work hard enough and assert yourself, and use your mind and imagination. You can shape the world to your desires. How true for my father and his survival strategies during the Depression, Second World War, the conquest of the beautiful Margaret who would ultimately become his wife, his escape from Hungary with three small children, and entrepreneurial rise in his new homeland, Canada. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start at the beginning. My father was born into comfortable circumstances to upper middle class parents, but in a time of political instability. The Hungarian Bolshevik conflict with Romania over Transylvania kept those countries at war even after the end of World War I. Transylvania was where my father was born, in the city of Najvarad, or as it was known to Romanians, Oradea Mare. May 24th, 1919, on the very day my father was born, despite its huge Hungarian majority, this beautiful, lively city, nicknamed Paris on the riverside Petze, was given, without any plebiscite, to the Kingdom of Romania. Hungary's dismemberment was ratified with the signing of the Treaty of Trianon. This treaty gave away two-thirds of Hungary's territory to neighboring countries and caused serious dislocation and assimilation issues for more than 60% of its population. It is said that Hungary is the only country in the world surrounded by itself. Signed by the Hungarians under, under duress on June the 4th, 1920, and a source of conflict in Europe even to this day, the economic effect of the Treaty of Trianon augmented the Romanian Depression and would dramatically impact my father's future. My father was happy as a child. <laughs> what is your happiest memory? As a child, uh, so I, as a child. I, I, I think and I was very successful in school, I was very successful in sports, I was in soccer team, not just in school soccer team, that I was the captain, but uh, in the uh, team and just any time, whichever I did, you know, was success and uh, happiness. How did you get along with your This brother? I never smoked. I never needed the smoke to have self-confidence. Paul was the younger of two sons born to Ergie Kartzag and Bela Rice. My grandmother Ergie, or Elizabeth for whom I'm named, had five sisters, Ermina, Marcia, Tergi, Roji, and two brothers, Ferenc and Dejo. My grandfather Bela had only one brother, Lajos. Their father, Maximilian, left to them a prosperous furniture manufacturing and export business in which they held a shared interest. And, as it would happen, the two brothers also held interest in Kartzag women. My grandfather Bela wed and married my grandmother Ergie, and his brother Lajos 
courted and married her sister Terji. Terji bore Eva and Nushi, double first cousins to my father, both still alive, now living in London. In addition to Eva and Nushi, first cousins to my father still living are Maria Bentley, daughter of Roji, and Eugene Abu, son of Marcia. The Kartsog siblings were close and would continue to play important, actually life-saving roles in my father's future. My father and his brother Jury remained in regular contact until Jury's untimely death in 1990 at the age of 73. How did you get along with your brother? Very well. They called us in the school, you know, the bigger and the smaller. <laughs> Oh. Any time I went with him, he was much taller like me. And you know, in winter coat, I, you know, in the middle of winter coat, in the back is one thing. You know that yeah, thing? Yeah. I felt that. It's a bell, but. Uh, yeah, the weight, the weight, yeah. yeah. I, I hold that and he was going <laughs> Like they called it Patish Patashon. <laughs> Zoro in Faru, as they called it in America, that. Zoro in Faru. You heard that, right? No. They were very uh, famous actresses, one tall guy and one short. Zorro and Patish Patasho. <laughs> they named us after those movie actresses. When anytime we went together, you know, anytime we, we were together, we fought, we fought sometimes, you know. I remember I kicked him with him when we lived first. But, uh, I was a big fighter, I can't do that. You won't believe that. They both loved sports, soccer in particular, and of course their interest in women was, and in my father's case still is, legendary. After 1929, Romania was engulfed in the worldwide economic crisis. There was no escape from large-scale unemployment and political unrest. The Romanian depression, though, was heightened due to the Treaty of Trianon. Trading among neighbor countries whittled away to nothing. Because of duties and taxes, goods like furniture from the family factory became too expensive to import from Romania. The family business soon saw ruin. When Paul was 10, the family moved to Bucharest in the hope that Erji's siblings, Marcia, Kato and Dejo, might help them find work. In Bucharest, Paul had to learn to speak a new language, Romanian, struggle with assimilation and endure financial hardship. And it was then, as a boy, just entering his adolescence, when my father learned those coping skills that would prepare him so well for the challenges of immigration to Canada. For extra money to help the family, at the tender age of 13, my father took a part-time job as an apprentice at a photographer's studio. He enjoyed spending time learning the new technologies and in so doing, immortalized the, all the angles of his profile. But, Sadly, his career was soon cut short when his boss disciplined him with a sharp slap across the face. Paul slapped him right back, proving that even at the age of 13, he possessed a self-respect well beyond his station and his years. The family's financial circumstance worsened. Paul's father, an ardent stamp collector, sold his magnificent collection to keep food on the table. At the age of 15, with no other options, his father advised Paul to quit school and start work full-time to help support the family. <clears throat> What's your saddest memory? From As childhood? A child, yeah. When I had to quit school. Quit school? Mm -hmm. How old were you? And I had to keep the soccer team. How old with help from his cousin Anton, Paul gained an apprenticeship with OFA a lumber manufacturer in a remote area of a Carpathian mountain.